Okay, so looking at this one, I can see some things that will probably confuse some people. And what I'm looking at here is going to be this area in particular. Is that you see that 45 degrees and naturally you'll want to think that this is a polar coordinate. But if you think back, if you have a 45 and another 45 triangle, that just tells you that this length here at the bottom is going to also be equal to that height. So that these two numbers here will make up your 45 degrees. Now once we get to the 25 and doing the slots, I'll show you some things that you can do on that one. But you can always draw this line here and make a skeleton if that seems to be one of the easiest ways of looking at it. So I'll try to remember while I'm doing the AutoCAD portion of it to do it both ways. One where I will generally track off of this one and then I will use the polar coordinate system to locate where this circle is. And the other way would just be to absolutely draw the lines from here to here and then continue off of here. So we're going to create the slot. We see that we do have a diameter of it. Now this one, I can't go in one direction because I don't know the all the information to figure it out. But I do know the information enough to construct like to this end point. And then I can construct maybe to this end point. And then I can start creating some lines and where these two lines will meet will give me that the finished part of this. So as I go through and I create this, you're going to see me actually create the lines here and then get up to this point. And like I said, I'll stop. And I usually like to start right here at this point, mainly because I have all the dimensions pulling from that. But I will stop right at this point here and, and then I'll start back at this one and build up to this one. And once I'm able to do that, then the rest of this should be fairly easy to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to AutoCAD and start drawing some of this. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start at the lower left corner. So I'll start with a line. Click here. Make sure that your ortho is turned on. And I'm going to go out this direction, a distance of 73. Now I will go off the screen. And if you can't zoom back enough, you can break the command and then come back and start from that end point. Okay, so the next point I want to do is get up to this point. So I'll type in 24.04 comma 24.04. And that's going to give me that angle that I'm looking for. And then this next one, I'm also going to have to use the rectangular. I do know the x direction, which is 16.42 comma. And I do know the y direction, which is 4.40. So at this point, I can, I can give myself a stop. Or I can create the line that kind of goes and exists that direction, which probably is a good idea. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put in an angle override just because I don't know how long this line is, but I want a line extending that direction. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, without typing any number in, I'm going to type in the angle symbol, and that's the less than. Then I'll type in my angle, which is 155. Once I hit the enter button, you're going to see that AutoCAD puts me in an angle override. And now all I have to do is aim this direction. And it doesn't really matter how long you go. I'll stop at this location. That looks fine to me. Okay, let's go ahead and jump down to this location. So I'll start back with the line command. And I'll start this point. Okay, and this is another one of those issues where I really don't know the length of this line, I know how high it goes up, but I don't know the length of that line. So I'll also do another angle override on this location. I'll just type in the angle symbol, 121. And I got the 121 from 180 degrees minus 59 degrees. Enter. And now once I don't know how long this line is either, so I'm just going to go at some imaginary distance. And if we want to all keep it consistent, you can aim this direction and make it 33 would be fine. Then escape. Let's go ahead and offset this line up. And that's going to be our 29.25 dimension. So let's go to offset. 
Remember with the offset command, it wants a distance first. So type in 29.25, enter, and then select this bottom line and click anywhere above it. Then escape. So now I know where these two lines are at. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a fillet with a radius of zero, and that should make this a nice sharp corner. Fill it. I'll check my radius, and I can see that my radius is zero, so just hit enter. And now I'll select this line and this line. I get a nice sharp corner there. Now what I need to do is, is lengthen this line to a distance of 20. So I will use the lengthen command to get me that total length of 20. Lengthen is located here. And I want the total, so select total. Select 20 as your distance. And then you're going to select on the object side of that object that I want to change. So I want to change this side, so I'll click here. And you will see that that line will shrink back to 20. Then escape. Okay, so now I need to create a line that's going this direction. Well, or I need a vertical line because I know the offset to that, but I don't have the angle to this line. So I'll just use a ray. I'll click here as my starting endpoint, and I'll just have that ray go directly up. So make sure that your cursor is pointing the up direction. Do a left click and then escape. Let's go ahead and offset this line a distance of 26.96. Select that line over to here. Now where this line endpoints and where it intersects here is going to be the creation of that line. So I'll draw a line from this endpoint to this intersection. Let's go ahead and delete these two ray lines that we have. And then we can either choose the fillet or trim to take off this portion. I'm more partial to using fillet command. So I'll just use fillet and I'll select this line and then that line. Okay. So now we're going to get back to the point of what I was trying to explain to you before. I'll create the skeleton of this one at first. So I'll draw a line from this endpoint going this direction. 68.01. Enter. And then I do know the distance to this line, so I can type in 90.93 angle 155. And that will get me where I need to go from that point. And now I can create a circle onto this line, and I can continue on and create the rest of the slot. Okay, so we're going to start with a more advanced step. I'll start a circle center diameter. And I'll shift and right click and choose from, select this endpoint, I'll type in the at command or the at symbol, I'll give it its direction which is 68.01 in the x direction, comma 0. So at 68.01 comma 0, enter. And that's going to place my circle at this location. Type in the diameter, which is going to be 14. And the next thing I'm going to do is move this circle from this center. And I can use the perpendicular command. One best way to use the perpendicular command is the uncheck my, perp my perpendicular. I'm sorry, I'm going to use the parallel command is to uncheck the perpendicular, shift right click, and use parallel. Now the way you use parallel is that you do not actually click on the line. You select the line that you want to go parallel to just by touching it. And then when you come down and move your cursor, you'll see the parallel symbol. And now type in the 90.93. And then hit the enter button. 
Let's go ahead and copy that circle. Doesn't matter where your base point is, I'll select somewhere up here. Once again, I like to use the parallel option. So parallel, touch the line that you want it to be parallel to, and then rotate up to that line. So you can see that it is parallel. Type in your 20.33. Then escape. So one thing I like to do is typically I'll draw a line from the center of this circle to the center of this circle. And then I will offset whatever the radius of that circle is. This one is fairly easy to figure out. We know that the diameter is 14, so we can offset a distance of 7. But if you didn't know that offset or that distance, one other way of doing that is that you can graphically select the distance. So I can select from this endpoint to this quadrant, and that will lock my distance. So from here I can offset this line going up, then I'll offset this one down to here. Let's go ahead and erase that middle line, and then trim. Next, let's go ahead and locate in our circles here at the bottom. And I'll use the from O snap to select and put in place in my first one. Circle, center diameter. Shift right click and select from. I want you to click on this endpoint. You have to type in the at symbol, so type in at. X coordinate is 19, comma, Y coordinate is 15.03. Enter. Diameter is 10. Let's go ahead and copy this one over, a distance of 35. So select copy, select your circle, enter, and click anywhere you like. So I'll click here. Then I will check my O snap on, aim this direction, 35, enter, and then hit the escape button. Okay, so that should have been the way that I usually use to create this, mainly because I couldn't figure out quite the distance of these lines here at the top, but I do have enough information to construct them. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed watching this one, and thank you.